I would always recommend you apply yourself. How many did you apply to? I applied to three. And how many of them took you? Just one. <laughs> one. Welcome once more today. I am here with my friend Olamide. I'll let Olamide introduce herself briefly. Hi everyone. I am Olamide, a student of the University of Potsdam and I'm rounding off my studies and masters in biochemistry and molecular biology. Well, I did biochemistry in my bachelor's so I felt going for a master's in biochemistry and molecular biology would give me an in-depth knowledge of the course basically and of course there are also some interesting prospects Mm -hmm. after the course basically how did i get that i had some couple of friends who were already studying in germany okay. so they told me about that so i went to daad .de. D, yeah. so there i was able to filter the courses with what i've done and i also wanted a free um, tuition university and i saw university of Potsdam as one of the universities okay. and i saw i needed to learn the language to like it yeah that's level. that's true and i just had to go to go to back in nigeria go to institutes where i started mm -hmm. my german classes and so i actually studied b2 and i had okay. i actually have the b1 and german certificate so when I had my A2, I just had to apply with my other um, university uh, documents, then I got the admission. Did you apply only to Potsdam or to other universities? Yeah, I applied to other universities, um, not just biochemistry, but something related to that. Okay. And for some of the universities, I had to do some exams back in Nigeria, like some entrance examinations. Yeah, I hate that. Like, I don't know why when I was applying, I would always skip those schools, you know. I wanted a school that one, I wouldn't apply through uni assist. I can apply directly to the to the university, and then two that there's no taking an exam before, like during the whole application process. I wanted something simple, and I applied to seven schools. How many did you apply to? I applied to three. And how many of them took you? Just one. <laughs> one. <laughs> which schools? Which other schools did you so apply to? I applied to FAU Friedrich Alexander University yes. in Hellangen. Yeah. That's in Bayern. Yeah. Then I also applied to Frey Universität Berlin. in Berlin. Yeah. So actually, after the, the application, I was asked to submit some other some supplemental documents like the cost list of what I'd done. The so, form, yeah. yeah. So, so after that, they said, oh, for what I, for that, what I did in the university, does not fit, it into, the, fit into the end curriculum. Yeah. I had the same issues because I also studied biochemistry from the University of Hillary. And then I think one of the first schools I applied to was um, that Free University of Berlin. I applied also for biochemistry, like masters in biochemistry, and then I got the same feedback. So I sent them that uh, course information as well, and then they got back to me. I was like, "Okay, your biochemistry in Nigeria does not fit into our biochemistry here." So for that, they didn't give me admission. It's kind of tricky because not every school does that. If you're coming from like very specific study backgrounds, and you want to continue in that path also abroad then maybe it makes sense to apply to think about the universities that you apply to. And to also keep in mind that the subject combination from your home country may not necessarily fit in to the one abroad. Relating to uni assist, yeah, I also was trying to skip the part of payments and all. But interestingly, University of Potsdam, at that time, I don't know, maybe they had a partnership or something, so they yeah. pay for the international students. Oh, they pay? Yeah, yeah. So oh, okay. even if you have to apply through uni assist, they're not paying any time. That's so interesting. For most international students studying at the University of Potsdam, yeah. of course, I believe um, international um, students actually apply through uni assist to University of Potsdam, but mm -hmm. I. I mean, to the best of my knowledge, I think they don't pay for the um, application. Even up till now? I am not quite certain, but okay. I know for all international programs. So I don't know now how okay. it's done. Okay. Would you recommend that, you know, prospective student apply via an agent or to apply themselves? It depends, basically. Okay. It depends on how much time you have. Yeah. It depends on the resources you have available to you. And then, well, I mean, as a person, I would say that it's always good that you apply yourself so you mm -hmm. know what you wrote in there, you know what you did while you're applying. So, and what you get. Yeah, so if there's any question, you're able to, you know, answer mm -hmm. at any point in time. Yeah, it depends on your, who you are as a person, your time. Some people who are working like full time, they may not necessarily be able to, you know, have enough time to apply, go through the rigorous application process. So it makes sense, of course, to want to outsource that. But if you have the time, you have the means, I would always recommend you apply yourself. Why? Because amongst other things, 
it also helps when you go for your visa interview. From my own personal experience, you wouldn't believe it. I was asked which courses would I take in that university? Which course would I take in the first semester, in the second semester? Which for me was crazy because what if I had not read those things? How would I know? I would always recommend if you can apply yourself and go through the process. It's not difficult, it only takes time. That's true. Could you say a bit about the masters in biochemistry and you said biochemistry and molecular biology. biology. Well, what's the, the major course content? I mean, so basically, there are just two compulsory subjects w w that we have to do, and um, so and that's just state of the arts, and that comprises of three different courses, which is biochemistry, cell biology, and um, genetics. Basically, okay. it's just three one, and you have to pass. And in Germany, for you to pass, you need a 4.0, which least. is like a D. We have also bioinformatics, and that's for real? yeah. <laughs> we can't, uh, we can't, we, we can't exempt these courses. For us okay. to grad graduate, we need to do these courses. Interestingly, actually, I mean, the way the world is turning into now, everything is technology, and that's why the need for bioinformatics. bioinformatics comes so, in. I mean, if you have done statistics in your bachelor's, maybe you might be able to find it interesting or find it easy to, you know, grapple with. But nonetheless, it's now based on coding so it's not just what you did on paper you need to you know practice it on, on you know programming software and things like that i feel like in germany now the direction it's going you can't do anything without it you know some kind of it skills it's always a bit of coding <laughs> then thereafter you can actually choose you can select the courses you want to do until you make them 90 credit points i mean okay. the regular period of study um, it's four semesters. And the good thing is, even if you take longer than the the normal study period, it does not negatively affect your grade. That's right. right. That's yeah, right. it does not negatively affect your grade. So I always recommend international students um, know you know your your competence, know the other things you have to do, and if you need to work, it's okay. Uh, extend the study program by one semester or by two semester, so you can take few courses, have time to work, socialize learn about the language, and just live a life, you know, it, it does not have to be all about studying, 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 studying. I feel like maybe at the master's level, it goes way beyond just studying, you know. So what can one do after studying this master's in biochemistry and molecular biology? What are you looking forward to? I, as a person, I'm looking forward to doing a PhD in, in the biotech industry, basically. You could do PhD anywhere, maybe in, in the industry, in the academia, in the research institutes, just as you wish. Okay. Then you could also work in the biopharma industries and, and, and also biotechs. I mean, there are just there are a lot of job opportunities that you can also do in the um, biotech, basically. Okay. But we, which one would you recommend? To do a PhD within academia, research institute or industry? What do you think? Um, they all have their pros and cons. Interestingly, I was speaking with um, a senior friend who happens to be also a PhD holder. And he also he works in the in, in the biopharma, and he said that yeah, basically it actually depends on what you want. Yeah. Do you want um high level of supervision? If you want to do that, then you need to work in the um academia. Academia, yeah. Then it also depends on okay, do you want to work with the state of the art equipment? I mean, you would all you would more likely to find. Of course, I mean this is Germany, so everywhere is to find. Yeah, you would actually get um. Yeah. You get state of the art equipment, and also you would, you would also get. Um, I mean, there are a lot of regulations basically. So, but nonetheless, for you to have the most advanced equipment, probably you would see that more more likely in the industry, the industry yeah. compared to the university. Okay. And um, it also depends on okay, the pay. I mean, in the industry, you get you are paid more compared mm -hmm. to the university or the research research institute. But nonetheless, there is more supervision in the research institute and in the industry, and also there is this. You are able to publish more, uh, to the best of my knowledge, and okay. I, I stand to be corrected here. Okay. You're able to publish more papers if, um, I mean, there's high tendency of you being able to publish more papers in the research institutes or in the universities compared to the um, industry. I think also, besides um, the fact that you get more pay in the industry, like maybe better equipment, and then in the academia and research institute, maybe you get more supervision. Another thing that one needs to think about is also. Um, the type of job, you know, what kind of contract you get. To the best of my knowledge, maybe things have changed. I know that within the academia and also research institute, you always get like a limited contract. And what that simply means is you get maybe for one year, two years, which has to be extended every time the contract ends, you know. 
So it's like you're a researcher or a PhD candidate and you're always thinking, okay, will my contract be extended or not? So you always have this feeling. Of, of course, as a PhD student, it's for the whole period of your mm -hmm. PhD studies. Sure. You know? But afterwards, if you do you want to stay back there or go to the research or go to the industry, I personally would recommend for international students. Um, I think there are more potentials for you in the industries because there you also not only gain your PhD, but also you ten the tendency of getting a permanent contract is also high there. And you also gain like practical industrial experience or work experience.